use headphones for best experience. and also I have this pointer so I can trace and what I would like to show you and the reason I have picked these two maps these are not original maps these are prints actually um, is that I would like to explore a bit the tram lines of Stockholm during this time Stockholm used to have a lot of tram lines before 1967. In 1967, um, Sweden went from driving on the left side of the roads to the right side of the roads, and that day, the, all the tram lines stopped and was replaced. Were replaced by bus lines. There are still a couple of trams in Stockholm, actually. One that was built after 1967 and uh, one in the western parts of the city um, that used to be like a um, suburban line probably uh, when it was built uh, but now the part it's uh, I mean the place the area where you can go with this tram is now considered part of the city but when it was constructed, it was more like a light rail to the western suburbs. But I will not talk about the new tram lines or the recent built tram lines. I will talk about these old tram lines. And uh, on this map from 1904, you can see here the different lines with different colors and here you can read all the numbers of the lines and where you can go and there's also some old advertising here what does it say here benedictine monk liqueur some liquor and another liquor here beer a lot of alcoholic drinks. Um, yeah, first, before I zoom in, I will just trace these lines. Uh, the first line is green and called the central line. 
or sorry, not the center line, it's called a circle line because it goes like this in a circle. And I think it's the first one that was constructed. That's why it's numbered number one. And uh, the second one is here, and it's this one, also a circle line. But from um, operating from west to east instead of from north to south, like like the green line, and then the third line is here from the north to the south and to the north again, like a big letter U or a horseshoe. Fourth one is this one, the blue one, and the fifth one, the green one, is the shortest one, is only this small part here, to the northwest. The sixth one is this one, and you can see where has its end point, it should be here somewhere. And the seventh one is this one. Also, it continues here. Now, let me zoom in a bit. view I think. You can see, for example, here is the center of well, the old town of Stockholm, the island in the very center. Today it's almost like a museum uh, area, or there are not many museums here, but I mean it's a, like a tourist attraction just to walk in the, this medieval um, streets. Um, yeah, let's start with this map. So now you can read here, um, line number one, it went from, um, or actually it had no destination names here because it's just called the circle line. It had green sign says here, and green um, uh, signal lamps, I don't know exactly how to translate this, but like the lamps on the, on the car, on the carriage, were green, and uh, here you can see the circle line, five, kilometers long and here you can see the route and some in two in two points here and here it's split into different roads for different directions I guess it was because the streets were so narrow or something, so they couldn't meet. Two cars couldn't meet on the same street, probably. So that was the solution. And this is actually just the northern part of Stockholm, or the central and the northern part. Southern part. Now, let's
let's do some tracing and then you will also see uh, the reason why I found this particular map quite interesting so it's from 1913 plan of Stockholm um, and um, if we start here, Norman story, it's this place here, where a lot of tram lines meet, it's a big junction here, the central or eastern part of the city. The reason I find this map so interesting is because it's probably the oldest map I've seen of Stockholm and I've seen a lot of Stockholm, old Stockholm maps but this one is probably the oldest one I've seen which has these small dots I mean first if you look carefully you can see the, the tram lines are drawn here like a like um thin line but also you can see there are small small dots along along the lines along the these black lines and I'm quite sure those will uh, indicate that uh, there's a stop for the tram there. And uh, yeah, this is the oldest map I've seen that has the stops marked on them. And uh, what I would like to do today is to trace those uh, seven lines. Um, and show you where the stops were located along the road, along the route. So let's start. It's a circle line, so we can start anywhere. I will think I will hold this one here on my left hand and the pointer with my right hand. Normal story. Here you can see the tram and the stop. Since it's a junction, it's a lot of stops here. Then we will look for stops along the road. I think the first one must be must be It gets a bit blurry when I try to zoom in more. J A A R L S. Can you see a small dot here? I think I saw it. I just saw it. Here somewhere, I think. Mm -hmm. It's not, this is not a dot, this is just a letter. They will not be this difficult to spot. Just this one over here, it's a bit messy. But I think here should be the first one by this road here, Jakob's Space. And the next one should be at this square here, Stureplan. It says Bad, Bath, like a swimming pool, a spa that I think still is here. You can visit Stureplan. So, 
let's do the plan, the square, and then the next one should be here. Here is a dot. Let's add to this small square here, Engelbrecht's plan. Close to the National uh, Library of Sweden, located here in Stockholm. And here's a small square with the next spot. Stop. Uh, Roslag's Torrey, it's called. This very tiny square, at least on this map. Then you can see. Has a stop here, the curve, um, at this street called Tegnerskata. And here, actually, where the tram um, depot for the for the tram uh, carriages. On this map. Map you can see here. They are marked here in this curve. Um, what does it say here? It says, uh, yeah, tram stations. But I guess it's a like a train uh, depot. And this block actually today, I think. Still is called the the tram depot in Swedish, of course. Let's see where we are. We continue here, following Tegnerskatan. It's a bit tricky. I think we have this um, split into two streets for four different directions. And then there's one stop here by Lundmakagatan in one direction and in the other direction it's a stop here. At this one is called Stora Pastukata. Actually, I have just read that uh, the first traffic lights in not just Stockholm but in Sweden were actually located here. And uh, they were put here in uh, not as early as 1913 but in, in uh, 1925. So I guess it was a big happening when these were the first and only traffic lights in Sweden. Here's the next stop by the central post office building. Big building. 
reading here that was uh, opened in 1903. That's the big, yeah, the main post office. And then there's a stop by the central station. You can see the railway station, the main railway station. And then there's another junction here where, where a lot of lines meet. And it's called Tegelbakken. Now, we will follow this bridge and end up here in Old Town. But I've seen that the Old Town is also here on this larger scale map, like a more detailed map. this particular area. Here you can see two dots by the street called Gåsgren. And then it's split in two branches, one for each direction, I guess. Um, yeah, the next stops here at Schön, Schönfeldsgrand, this street is called. And uh, here is the next stop at Konam Story, big square here. And the next one is here at Slussplanen. And this is an interesting place because, as you can see, there are trams on the other side of these two bridges. Also, but no connection between those. It's actually because um, the northern part of Stockholm, or north of this, these sea locks, Slussan, had their own um, tram company. And then the southern part the man had a separate uh, tram company with three tram lines as well that started here in Slesen. And the reason was I guess because they couldn't build the railway crossing this um, it was too complicated or something so they couldn't do that for a long time um, and there were two separate companies operating in Stockholm. Uh, but after a couple of years after 1913, I think maybe in 1919 or 1920 or something like that, or yeah, around 19, 1920, and the two d different parts were connected. So you could go from north to south and from south to north. And the, all the lines were, they were new, a new system, new, they modified the, the map, the lines a lot. But here's the next stop, and by Tullgrand. The next one by Brunsgrand. The next.
next one here by Schlotzbacken Castle Slope and here you have the Royal Castle of Stockholm here you can see the next stop at Leonbacken and then it follows the bridge Norbro starts here the center of the castle and it goes in the north western direction and uh, on the other side of that bridge is this big square by next to the opera house. It's called the Gustav Adolf Story. This square here. Where also some tram lines meet. And the next one is here by Kungstegotschgatan. This street here. And the next one is here. By Ashenalskatan. Also, I know this place is called Karl and Tolf the Story. Um, Karl the. It's, it's an old Swedish king. Karl the Twelfth Square. So maybe th this stop was called Karl and Tolf the Story. And then we're back at Norman Story Nor Malm's Story North Malm Square Malm is an old traditional name for the different parts of Stockholm and yeah, the Eastern Östermalm Eastern Malm North Northern Malm Norman and this is South the Southern Malm Southern Malm So this is the square of north, the north Malm. That was this green line. Now let's move on to this black line here. Line number two. Östermalm to Kungsholmen. It has white signs and white signal lamps. It goes from the very western part here. Eastern part, and here you can see it usually went like this, following the same route as uh, the green line. But uh, the plan was to let it follow Kungsgatan, but Kungsgatan wasn't uh, constructed all the way. Here was Kungsgatan, but then this part was not built until uh, let's see, nineteen. 11, I think it was open because this is a very high hill or a long ridge in the center of Stockholm that was so all these streets were on a hill and and then they were digging this it was a lot of construction digging this road so it connected these western parts of Stockholm and the eastern parts of Stockholm so in 1911 had finished that work and the, the tram could start to follow this new road. So on this map from 
13 should have come Scott down ready for the tracks. Let's start here in the west. Um, actually, I mean the, the other map is from 1904. You can see they were connected like this and it was a circle line. But in 1913 it was changed a bit, so it's no longer a circle, there's no tram here. As you can see, it ends here actually. This is the end point. So let's start from this one. Um, by this road here called Maribais. Maribais got. And there's a stop here in this corner. Santiago's got done. The Fleming got done. Crossing. And the next one is here by Pulham's got done. And then here. Or no, here. Pilgata. It says for shinings. For shinings. In Rettningen. This was like a, a nursing home for. It was also called Krubens. It was a nursing home for. Poor people, elderly people, ill people. And the next one is here. small square called Kungsbro Plan. There's a Kungsbro. Oh, Kungs. I can't see if it says Kungsbro or Kungsholmsbro. It doesn't matter. I think this is called Kungsbro Plan, but the text is very tiny. And this is uh, where this western island ends. You can see I started here in the west on uh, one of Stockholm's islands, Kungsholmen, King's Island. So the, after this small bridge, we're back in Normalm, where we were following the first tram. And the next stop here will be this crossing. Remember the crossing with the first red light, or I mean the um, the traffic lights of Sweden, the corner of uh, Vasagatan, Kungsgatan. And the next one is here, close to Hertoriet. By Trottning Gata. Yeah, where comes Gata meets Trottning Gata. And then we follow this newly constructed part of Kung's Gata all the way to Stureplan. This square at Östermalm with a pool and then we follow this street, Sturigata um, it has a stop here at Kumlegårdsgata it's named after this big park here the park is called Humlegård where the National Library is located and then we have 
the stop by Linear Gautam. And the next one, not in here, at Kolaberg. This, you can see it's a very wide street. I think these were designed after French model with this very broad roads and these squares, etoiles. So you can see the tram following, split into two separate lines because the, the road is so wide. And the next one is here at Kirjavturegatan. And the next stop should be here, it's a small dot, isn't it? By Sibilgatan. Sit here at Tilly got at Tilly got and then here at oh, there's a difficulty thing. Hmm. big square color color plan that was still under construction here you can see it was planned but not finished okay. so this was really in the outskirts of the city by this time and we followed this also a wide road here and the next stop here at Niagatan again. Today, I guess this is the historic, historical museum of Stockholm. This building. So by this bridge, Djurgårdsbron, connecting Östermalm to Djurgården Island. This very green island with a lot of parks, museums. So from Djurgårdsbron, we follow Strandvägen. And the next one, Styrmansgatan. And the next one, Sibylgatan. And the next one, this square here called Nybrokplan. By Nybro, here says Nybro Hamnen. The Nybro port is also by the dramatic big Dramaten. It's a big theater, classic theater. And the 
next stop will be this junction, Norman's Toll. And we follow the same route for a while as the first one. So we have Kalentolf's story there. And this one that I would like to call Kungstrengotskatan. Follow the coast here to Gustav Adolf's story, this big square in front of the royal castle, or the other side of the water from the royal castle, and by the opera house. And from here, mm, yeah, here, here's the next stop by. It's very messy here, but I guess it's called Radbutoriet. At least today it's called Radbutoriet. I think it might say that here. And the next stop here is Tegelbakken, the junction in this western part. continues over a bridge back to Kungsholmen Island, where we started. Um, here is a stop that is just next to the city hall. But I would not call it the city hall because uh, the city hall wasn't constructed by this time, actually. It was constructed in 19... 23, or it was uh, opened in 1923. So it's actually 100 years old this year. I think they celebrate that a bit. But uh, at this area, where it now is the city hall, was... Uh, an old uh, steam mill or grist mill called Eldkvarn um, that stood here in the 1800s but it burnt down in a big fire in 1878 so it was a quite famous fire so in 1911 I would rather call this place Eldkvarn than the city hall And here's the next one, Kaplan's Bakken, and the next one, close to Ulrika Eleonora Church, on the street Parmetagata. And the next stop at Kungsholm's Torg, the square that is not look square shaped at all, it's very more look like a street. And next stop will be here at Pilgatan. Here they had started to build the um, police station, the headquarters of the police in Stockholm. It opened in 1911, I think, so it was quite new here. I don't see if it says here something about the police. Yeah, here, police. Police station. And the next stop must be here by this smaller street, or maybe named after this bigger street, Pulhamsgatan. And then, I 
guess it should be a some stop here, but I can't see. This is not a dot, I think, it's just a cross. Looks like the next one is here by Maria Bariscotan again. So you can see we're back almost where we started. Here we started. And this line was actually extended to the west in 1912. I don't think there are any stops here, marked here, maybe there were stops, but it was so new by this time. It was constructed in 1912, this extension of line number two, to the very western part of this island. And one year later, or two years later, it would continue over this bridge and go to a place called Alvik just here, and then continue to Bromma. And why I'm mentioning this is because... Yeah, maybe you can see it here. Here. Here we have Kungsholmen Island. So we have been following line 2, like this. And then it followed this line, and and here somewhere Bromma. and this is actually today the only remaining tram line in Stockholm from this time if you don't count the light railway on Lidinge that was also I guess considered a tram from the start but now it's more considered a light railway suburban railway this has always been considered a tram line, so it was the only one that was kept in 1967 when they, the other ones were, were discontinued. But now it ends here at Alvik, so it's only, it doesn't follow, it doesn't continue into the city center really, it's more in the outskirts. By the way, this small map is quite interesting because here you can see the central parts of Stockholm and it says here Stockholm and the incorporated um, proposed parishes, I guess you can call it. It means the areas surrounding Stockholm that was Suggested, suggested to be incorporated in Stockholm city. So to the east there was Nacka. To the south it was Brannkyrka. To the west it was Bromma. And to the north, no, to the north east it was Lidingö. And today Bromma and Brannkyrka are actually parts of Stockholm city, but not. Nacka and Lidingö. These are still municipalities on its own, even though they are very close to central Stockholm. So they are part of, they are considered part of Greater Stockholm, uh, but actually have their own like, municipalities. And Brennsjöka actually was incorporated in, um, I think, 1911 perhaps, or yeah, around this time, at least, 1912, 1913, something like that. Let's continue with line number three, this one. It follows a lot Line number one, you can see line number one, the circle line goes like this. So I will not trace it south of this point or south of this point. But I will trace this part here and this part here. Which street is this? I think it's Dalagon. Mm, I 
forgot to read this to you. Uh, Estimam, the second line, Estimam to Kung Salman. It was uh, 11 kilometers long. Now, the third line, Haga to Slesen to Rosnak's Tool. It's 8 kilometers long in 1904. Line number three, Haga to Slesen to Rosnak's Tool. There's a red sign and red signal lamps. So, let's start here at um, Haga Grinda. Gates. There are some gates here to this uh, big park, Hagebacken. Um, it's actually a part of the uh, Royal National City Park in Stockholm. And here is the Haga Palace, for example. It was designed, the whole park was designed in late. 1700s and inspired by the English landscape parks landscape gardens it's a very nice place um, and here you can see that this uh, tram line actually continues more to the north On this overview map here, you can see it had been extended after 1904. So in 1913, it was extended to all the way to Sundbyberg. So it's like a, it continued to the northwestern suburbs of Stockholm. But on this map most northern point you can see is Haga Haga Grinda or actually it's called Haga Södra Southern Haga there are also gates in the, the northern part of the park and the next stop will be here in Nortul the northern gates to the city by Solna Wagen. And then it continues here on Nortulsgatan. And let's look for the next stop here. By Vanadiswagen. The next one is here, the corner of Nordrosgatan and uh, Freigatan. And the next stop here at this triangular square. I don't know, I shouldn't call it a square, but I mean. It's a plaza, maybe you can call it. Um, wooden plan. Big junct traffic junction today. And here's the next stop. Because I will now continue on this street. Upland Scott, and it's called. So it has a stop here at the crossing between Odengata and Uplandsgata. And this is a new route. Uh, in 1904 it went on this road instead on Dalagata. But uh, yeah, in 1913 it runs on this road 
So I stop here in this corner and then the next one here by Kungstenskata. And then the next one. Oh no, I lost it. Um, here, of course, Kungsten's got them. And then here, by Ting near London, small park, by Ting near Gata. Ting near Gata continues on both sides of this. this square. Uh, I have read and I know that this um, street, Tengagata, once was called uh, Trebaka Longgata. It means three hills long street. So it went up and down on three hills. And one of those streets must be here where I mentioned this uh, high ridge that was crossing the city. And next stop uh, is here, Norra and now it connects to, connects to um, line number one, the circle line, so I will not mention all these stops, because I've already done it. So we go back all the way to Roslag's Torg, the stop here. And uh, instead of following the circle line, continue this street. And uh, the next stop here, Tignerskatan. direction, also an old gate to the city, since it's called Tull, it means toll, the main road to the northeastern, to the northeast, went from here in the, in the past, and still does. So that was this line. Haga to Slussen to Roslags to 8 kilometers. Now let's move to the light blue line here. Valhallavägen to Udingatan to Kungsholmen 3. Point. What does it say? Probably 3.5 kilometers. So 
it starts from here, or um, Sture Plan in Estemalm. And it followed these streets until it reaches um, Hantwerkegata on Kungsholmen, this island in the west. And here you can see line number four, Stureplan, Vallelavägen, St. Eritsbron. Yeah, I guess it stopped here at St. Eric Bridge. And you can see the line is uh, dashed. So it was planned to continue to Antwerkagata. Not quite yet. Um, it had blue signs and blue signal lamps. I guess it had yellow, yellow number. I'm not sure, but at least it's drawn like that. And actually, I did some research and found out that this map can't be from 1904. It must be from autumn 1905. And the reason... Is I will show you. Um, because um, I think this map must be from the time when all the trams in Stockholm and finally became um, electrified. So the electrification process took place in the early 1900s. Um, so the first lines were uh, horse cars, trams um, drawn by horses. Started in 1877. But in 1905, in February, the last horse-drawn tram was um, had its last journey here on this uh, section here from Tegelbakken along Hansvakagatan to Marienbergsgatan. And when this part finally was electrified as well, every all the trams were electrified, and then they connected these points like this, so it became a loop, this black circle line here. And this happened in 1905. Another evidence is that this light blue line that we will trace soon, didn't open until late December 1904. So it was the first tram line, I think, that started, that didn't have, um, that was a horse-drawn tram line. So this was electrified from the start. And already in December 1905, it got a new route along this street, um, Sibyllgatan, here, instead of Sturegatan. So then, this map must be from 1905. Also, line number six, that we will trace later, um, was also a quite new line. It started in May 1905, actually. It opened. So it's even newer than this one. But then it had its end point here in May. And in August, it went all the way from Sturplan. Like this. The sixth line. So yeah, this must be from, th this map can't be older than August 1905, since you can see 
the line 6 starting in the studio plan and it can't be younger than December 1905 since line number 4 still runs here at Stilegata and not Sibilegata So, on this map from 1913, uh, line number five, uh, four, that I will trace now, will go from normal story here. To and I will, I will follow the new route to Sibiliga. So here's the next stop, um, neighbor plan that it shared with line number two. I already traced that one. But then he turns left here and runs along Sibiligata. And this must be the first stop at Sibiligata by. Ridagata Yeah, Ridagata Next one here by Ostermans Toy The square of Osterman area And let's see where the next stop is be here, here, by Linnegata, not there, but here, at the corner of Sibiligata and this Crossing Carla again. There's a stop here, as the man's got that. And then the next one here, when it turns to the left, the corner of Vallalavegen and Sibilica. And here, I believe, must be a stop by this one called, yeah, it's Grev, Grev Ture Gatan, long name. Here also you can see Swedish artillery regiments barracks. So here were some military buildings for the Swedish armed forces. And uh, let's see. Next one is here in the corner between Vallanavägen um, and Sturegata. And this is the next one in the middle of a block like this. So I guess it's a stop for the stadium if you wanted to visit the stadium. In 1913, the stadium was completely new. It had been constructed in 1912 and opened in 1912, the Olympic Stadium for the Olympic Games in 1912 that was held in Stockholm, actually. 
last time, and I guess only time uh, the Olympic Games has taken place in Stockholm and Sweden. So, of course, there must have been a stop for the trams here. And the next stop is at this triangular square um, called Lilian's Plan. And the next one here by Astra Stahunen the Eastern Railway Station for the trains that will go to Ruslagen the, the northeastern direction from the city and then Next one must be here, the corner of the Gata, Valhallavägen, and it now continues on Odengata. And that's the next stop here by Ruslagsgatan, where we just traveled along the route for um, tram number three. And next up here, the Bell Deben Scotland, it's called. And here, Sveabrun. This was a bridge um, over a. There must have been some difference in uh, elevation here because it was a bridge over another bridge. Or, I mean, over another street. Today, there's one of the main uh, streets of Stockholm here, Sveavägen. But it was not constructed in 1930. It was constructed in 1920s, most of it. So then these two, these two streets, uh, Stora Bastogatan and Lilla Bastogatan, were like merged together. So this block in between those streets are, were gone, was gone. And today this is a wide main road through the city. So it must have been um, very different here, like a bridge over some old narrow roads. Because today there's no bridge, it's just a normal crossing here. Um, yeah, here's today the library, um, Stockholm, Stockholm Public Library, the main library for the city, but it was opened in 1928, so it was not here in 1930. So, next stop is Udenplan. This square again, and then let's see. Here, Dalagata at the corner of Vasa Park. This big park. Next one, Sigtunagatan. And next one, this square, also triangular, um, Sankt Eriks Plan. And then it continued over this bridge, Sankt Eriksbron.
to Kung Solomon Western Island Stock. So this is a letter, not the small dot. Here's the next stop by Fleming Auto. This big street. And then it ends here, at, uh, where it meets um, Huntrakagatan and line number two. So it's almost like a circle, beginning of a circle of a big wide circle around the city. And now let's move to the fifth line from Dalagatan to Kalbergsväg. Only one kilometer. This one was three and a half kilometer. One point five, I would say. One point five kilometer. Line number five. Dalagata to Kalbari. It has yellow signs and yellow. Very short route, but I know it was later extended and following Dalagata all the way to Norabantoyet. So I will trace that part as well since I didn't do it for the line number three because yeah, it was the it was organized in another way later. So I will start here at the end point, Kalbeis. What was it called? Kalbeis uh, Wagen? Or just Kalbei? But it, it, it is located here where Kalbergsvägen meets Solna Solnavägen and then the first stop will be Norrbackagata skating in the winter when the water freezes and there's the next one 
Anführungszeichen gehabt haben. And here's thing near Gatan. Where the Gatan meets thing near Gatan. And uh, not about that. It's named like that because it's close to all these uh, railway tracks. Bana is a track for a railway. The northern railway track square. And here's the railway station. Um, yeah, the next line will be this one. Two colors, red and green, Vertalinian, 3.5 maybe kilometers. And here you can see it's a dashed line in two colors. And you can't see all the the route, it just says it will continue to Vatan. The green line number six went from Stureplan to, to Vatan and red and green signs. So, yeah, after five numbers you couldn't add just another color, so you had to, I guess, the idea was to combine colors to separate them from the other line. Red and green signs and a red and green lamp. So starting here from Sturplan. First stop is Humlimochkatan. Leading to this park of Lebordan and the National Library. And then Linnea Gatan, this street is called. And next one must be this one, Carlo Vagno. Named after this part of the city, Estemal. And uh, Valhalla Wagen. Stop. And maybe it's a small stop here, I can't, I'm not sure. Actually, hmm. There, isn't that a stop? Don't you think so? Also close to the stadium. And as the Malm's um, uh, sports field. Idos Platz, sports field. So it's a lot of sports fields and stadiums in this area. And in this area there's a lot of military buildings. Next stop, close to Lingard till Hest, 
Stivgardet till hästkasern. It actually means um, the cavalry, cavalry regiment. Swedish Armed Forces. And today, on this location, is um, actually the headquarters for Swedish Armed Forces. the bridge to Yugoda. The first stop is here by the Nordic Museum. Nordic can see it. And it has a stop here by the statue of Karl the 15th and a Swedish king from 1800s also this is one entrance to I think it's the old entrance to Skansen so maybe you had to to get off the um, tram here if you wanted to go to Skansen this big area here. It's an open air museum, opened in 1891, where there are a lot of buildings collected from all over Sweden. Mm. And then it continues here to Almena. 
gränd allmänna gränd and the next stop is here by slätten or kyrgårds slätten plus the circus it's like a concert hall but I guess it was built originally for circus and the next one is this close to this school public school of this area you got And then the last stop here by Perman's Roo. This house. There are a lot of houses, named houses here. It's like it's not like designed as a city with streets. There's a small part here with streets blocks, but otherwise it's just scattered houses around here. Djurgården is also part of the Royal National City Park. So it's a lot of recreation area, parks, this open air museum, this, all this was part of this Royal Park all the way to Haga Park in the north. Now let's move to the south. Because I still haven't showed you anything of this island, part of central Stockholm. The southern Malm, southern Malm. Uh, it's a very big part of central Stockholm and it's it's connected here at the um, sea locks Slussen um, and remember I showed you that the northern network of trams went here as its southern point before they returned to the north and on the other side you could take the southern uh, tram lines from the southern network that continued on this island and I will just show you quickly the three lines uh, that you could take in 1913 and trace them and see if I can find the the stops from those lines as well. So there were uh, one line to the west, one line to the south, and one line to the east. Quite a simple network. Let's continue with the western one, also the first one. Um, all these were electri electric trams in 1913. Uh, Slussen or Karl Johan Story. The square here with the statue of Karl the Fourteenth, the King. Um, then I guess this is not a stop. This is a letter. First stop is probably here. Huh. Yeah. Um, by um, Ragwald's Gotham, this one is called. And 
Sundowns got that. And here's the next stop by Ringwegen. And here's one more by this small street called Anskarjegata. this I sometimes get very lost um, but I needed to see the dots and the text maybe it's easier for you to spot them and read it but my screen on the camera is very tiny yeah I must have been here and the next one here by Varvskata and then oh here also no no skip this road and then here it's a loop so at this corner Corner of um, Unskatan and uh, Longholmskatan. And the last stop, Unstull. The gate to the city from the southwest. It's a very natural net natural border as well because it's a it's water and a bridge and on the other side was Brandkirke municipality uh, but from 1913 actually it was incorporated in Stockholm so Stockholm expanded during this time um, so the traditional city was no longer limited by this old gates um, here's Hunstull and I guess there are at least one dot here isn't it? yeah Hunsch no Brennkirka Gata Longholmsgata in that corner So that was um, uh, line number one in the southern network, also called Hunstull's line, because it it uh, went from here, from Slussen to Hunstull in the west. And it, it was actually, before it was electrified, it was actually not a horse-drawn tram, like all the other lines. It was... Um, steam locomotive tram it was the only one um, the only steam tram engine um, and I read that it was not very popular because it was there was so much there was so much smoke from it the streets got very messy and 
Also, I read that the reason they tried this instead of horse drawn engine is because it starts with a very steep slope here, so maybe it was too steep for horses or something. Um, so they tried this new type of tram engine. And the second one from Carl Johan's story to Ragnvald's Gatan here where where it turned left and then left again and here's the first stop after Ragvalskata at the corner of uh, St. Paul's St. Paul's Gatan and Yatgatan, the main street to the south. And then the next one must be oh, here by Hagbergsgata. And then the next one at Södra Bantariet. Remember Norra Bantariet in the north. This was the Södra Bantariet uh, next to the railway tracks in the south. And Turn to the left again, and we have a stop here at Östjötagata. Östjöta. Yeah, Gata. These are letters, so this is a dot here, and this street is called Nytorsgata, no sorry, it says Söder Mana Gata. And the next stop, let's see. Over here, and the next one is here at Nitoris Gotan. So this is Nitoris Gotan. And then uh, the next one. At the corner of Forkundagatan, the one we are following, and uh, Rienskjernasgata. And we continue to this one. Stagata. And the next one by Estagata. Tegelvik 
Egerviken. Today there there is no Egerviken here anymore. It's a big port for ships in this area. the next stop. And now uh, we have been following Falkner Gotham, but now um, continue on this uh, small street Tanvik Gotham. So I will call this one Tanvik Gotham. Exactly the same route as uh, the second line in the beginning. Södra Bantorget, this central square for the Södermalm. Then it continues Götgatan to the south and stops here by. Bunde Gata and also here at Blekinge Gata The next one here This curved street, ring as in circle. And the last stop on this map to the very south, just before the bridge. Oh wait, no. At this point there were no bridge, it was still connected by nerve, but this was the southern uh, gate to the city from this direction, from the, from the very south direction. Skanstull. So I guess this one was called Skanstull. And you can also see it continues to the south. So 
we can take a look at this smaller map here, showing a bit more the outskirts around Stockholm. In the center you don't see the, the tram lines as detailed as on the main map, but um, outside the gates, the, t the tullar, then you can see the tram lines as well continuing. So there was uh, one, this uh, the third one uh, of the southern network continued to a new suburb in Rueda. Here. This was actually happening right at this point, around 1913. It happened a lot. Stockholm, originally just this part, um, bought new land for incorporating new areas and started to build new suburbs, new new areas, new parts of the city, more far from the very center. And at the same time they started to they opened new tram lines that was not only limited to the center but also went to these new areas. So one of those were this line was this line. And here you can see there were plans to extend it all the way to Södertörns Villastad, where it connected to the railway, but that never happened. And here to the southwest there were new lines open around 1911, I think three new lines, starting at Liljeholmen. Mm, so they were not connected to the southern um, trams here. You have to walk over the bridge. But there were new suburbs here also. And after this part got incorporated in Stockholm in 1913, I guess, Soon you could also follow, continue on, on the same tram line over the bridge, and yeah. so you didn't have to to change here, walk, and to the north west. I think I showed you a bit on the other map. The line two. went here in 1905 or no uh, in on the other map the main map it looked like it stopped here but here you can see actually they had plans or maybe already it had it had been extended over the bridge and to these new suburbs Eppelvik, Eppelviken, and does it say Kungsholmens Villastad and Bromma? So this was happening just at this moment, so it was maybe not clear exactly. Maybe it was just planned and built in a couple of months, months after this map was published. And also to the north I showed you that line number three was extended to these areas. Because yeah, Bromma was also incorporated in Stockholm at some point around this time. Danderyd, Lidingö, Nacka was still as and still are today separate municipalities so they had their private railways not connected to the to the to the city railways the leading trains stopped here at least before the bridge was built 
not sure if the if the bridge is is already built here. Maybe it is. I will zoom out. Last thing I would like to show you is uh, this book, or some maps from this book. It's a book about the trams in Stockholm um, from 1927, when they celebrated 50 years. And at the end of this book, there are also some maps. show the network of um, trams at the year 1900, both the northern network and the southern network. Here there were only two lines in the southern. And they are marked here with an H letter and an O letter. O as in Ångspårväg, steam an H as in horse, tram, hest. It didn't reach Dunwich Tull at this point, only here, Erstagaten, I guess, stuck. And uh, here's the letter R for Ringlinien. Circle line. The letter K for Kungsholms Linjen. It was not a circle at this point, only half of it. Compared to, to the previous map, this one. Where it became a loop. Um, and then uh, Ö as in Östermans linje. Ah, okay, it was two separate lines, Östermans linje and Kungsholms linje. And at some point after this, it, they were connected into one big loop, I guess. But here there were still horse-drawn trams. No electric trams in 1900, I think the first one was uh, was uh, electrified in 1901, so one year late. And then it says H, as in Haga Linien. They had no numbers here, they were, they had names instead of numbers. But the number system was completely new when this map was published. One, two, three. C stands for Jogurts Linien, the one going from the center to Jogurt, and had its uh, end point here. Also, there's a letter V. It says here Vasa Stads Linien. I guess maybe it's the origin of the line 5, 5 that goes here, on later maps, but it had a completely different route when they were um, horse-drawn. Yeah. But it was fun to see this map because here you can have a, had an overview of also the southern network at this point. Mm. 
Also, I think the reason why why they didn't um, go directly from Honshkotan to to Yatkotan here was because this is also a very steep slope. From here, sea level, there are immediately very steep slopes if you want to go to this island. So it was maybe a bit complicated to both to connect these two islands and, and to have the trams going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, are, they are listed on the lines, both from the northern the northern network and two lines from the southern network. So it's Ringlinien, Östermalmslinien, Kongsundslinien, Djurgårdslinien, Hagalinien, Vasastadslinien. And it says Ringlinien has a green sign. Systemums linear white signs, consoms linear gray signs, Yugos linear red signs, Haga linear red signs, Vasastats linear blue signs. And in the southern network, there's Ongsporvangs linear, the steam engine, it had blue signs. And Hest's province linear, the, the horse drawn tram, had black signs. And the last map I would like to show you is this one from 1927. This book was published. So here you can see it's a bit more complicated. There are more lines added. Also, the blue ones are bus lines. And here you can see a lot of new lines starting to pop up here on the eastern suburbs. Sorry, the western suburbs here, here. Also, in the southern network, uh, there was a line called the fourth line that became some kind of circle line for the southern part, going like this. And then I think it was connected to the northern fourth line as well, so it became a really big loop. But I will not talk more about this map in this video. Maybe for another video. I just wanted to show you quickly. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it relaxing to watch. Listen. See you soon.